guys, Abraxas here, and we're playing some Universe Sandbox 2. So, let's go ahead and get started. I have my new USB sound card, which hopefully improves the microphone quality. And, uh, yeah, I'm also playing in 1080p, so you guys can actually see the uh, HUD at full size. So, very nice. 60 FPS because of the new hard drive, and, uh, yeah. I am uh, very, very, very satisfied with this new recording equipment. Anyways, um, yeah, basically I have a kind of a revisit, kind of different than the last video I made. I apparently made a mistake, I didn't actually catch, uh, Lord Zombie's comment fully, uh, but just a tool also suggested this. Basically, what they want me to do is kind of invert the orbits of all these planets, or positions rather, not the orbits, but the positions, kind of orbits. Basically, uh, flip everything around, put... Mercury out here where Neptune is, put Uranus out here where, uh, or I mean put Venus out here where Uranus is, and so forth. Basically, the final planet here will be Neptune right here in Mercury's position. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be a little bit difficult because we don't want all of this junk around here. We don't need any of that. Um, I don't, I'm not going to count Pluto, I know. I know it's still a planet, I'm just not going to count it. Because, I mean, that's way out there. Um, let's go ahead and go to my simulations, and I do have the, if I can find it, I don't think this Quasar Galaxy works anymore. No, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it's still broken. It worked after you loaded it anyways, but I have one just called Named Solar System, which re removes most of this, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pause, I'm going to get rid of all of these little dwarf planets. I know, Pluto, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna get rid of, where is Vesta and Ceres. I'm gonna clear out all these asteroids that are just hanging out here. The reason why is because, well, they bogged down the performance of the simulation. And we're gonna wanna fast forward quite a ways. I just get rid of, no I didn't. I thought I got rid of Neptune for a second there. So most of these asteroids are gone. I don't think I need to get rid of all of them. Get rid of most of the Kuiper Belt, pretty much. Don't want to select Neptune. There we go. And I might just save this, just so I don't have to do it again. Uh, I still have a few more out here. I could, I could just jump cut this, but I'm probably not going to. And I jump cut my videos more. Well, because, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like, uh, just kind of longer videos. I mean, if you really wanted to jump cut, you could just skip through, you know? Well, you're gonna really jump cut parts that I feel necessary, like such as time lapsing and stuff like that. I mean, I literally have videos on my channel of like eight hours videos of just a planet orbiting a star. <laughs> Besides, I, I really hate uh, jump cut heavy videos anyways, but I just jump cut it right there because I had to go close my door. Um, should I keep the asteroid belt here? There's not a lot of asteroids there, and I feel like it'll make a cool little effect. Um, got a couple more right here. So, here is our solar system without the Kuiper belt, but we still have the little asteroid belt between uh, Mars and Jupiter. So, let's go ahead and save the simulation. Not open. Save. Or save. Save. Uh, what should I name it? Performance simulation? I misspelled Kuiper. Oh well. Okay, there we go. So, now that I've gotten that done, let's start uh, swapping some planets around. So, Mercury. We, I'm not going to bother with the eccentricity and the uh, kind of angle of the orbits. As you can see, there's kind of tilts to some of these orbits. I'm just going to drop them flat with the sun. And in whatever orbit the game feels is necessary. I'm just going to basically focus on distance to kind of remove this factor. So I think that's about as far as Mercury's orbit goes. So we have Neptune there. Let's delete Mercury. Venus, we want to use Uranus. Okay, there is Uranus. Oh, 
Okay, double click the sun. There we go. So, let's go ahead and get rid of Venus. And for Earth, we want Saturn. Where is Saturn? There's Saturn. So this should just sit at one astronomical unit. Let's put it over here so it's not immediately affected. There we go, one AU. There's Saturn sitting at one astronomical unit. Mars. Mars would be Jupiter, I do believe. Ooh, Mars is a little bit more eccentric than I thought it would be. Okay, let's let's drop it at the furthest point of its orbit. Oh, did I just consume Mars? Hopefully I didn't consume Mars. No, I'm very close to. Let's just delete Mars there. <laughs> okay, so... As for Jupiter, we want Mars. Oh, that's going to be a little bit difficult. Um... Wow, oh, okay. Just put it at a solid two astronomical units. Actually, let's uh, go to view and change it to orbits instead of trails. That's a bit better. Select the sun again. Let's get rid of these advanced settings. We don't need none of them. Okay, I still have Jupiter selected. Why can't I select the sun? There we go, now it's working. Okay, let's add in Mars. And let's try to fit on this orbit the best we can. Should it go furthest point or closest point? Like for dramatic effect, we should put it at closest point. Let's put it at closest point, just to spice it up a bit. Now as for Earth, we're gonna be putting it in Saturn's orbit. Let's go for closest point again. I think, I think that'll be a little bit more fun. It would have a better chance of being affected by all these massive gas giants in the center. And Venus. Um, I guess closest point once more, so which would probably be like maybe right over here. Sorry about that. Okay, so there's Venus. And then Mercury, which uh, is going to be way out here. Instead of a hot terrestrial world, it'll be a very, very cold terrestrial world. So here's our orbits. Let's go ahead and turn on trails. There we go, and let's just hit play. Okay, so as you can see, these inner planets are orbiting very quickly, as is expected. Earth, as expected, is not going to be habitable. It's going to turn into an ice ball. A snowball Earth. In fact, none of these planets will actually be habitable. Maybe some of the moons around these planets, but I don't know how to actually add those into the simulation. Sometimes they spawn in, sometimes they don't. Um, let's see, Jupiter. Oh, you click on whole system. Well, whatever, that would add too many factors. And we just want to see what really the effects happen on the uh, orbits themselves anyways. But maybe uh, Jupiter's moons would actually be habitable since they sit right there where Earth is. Possibly. So, since we have less objects, I should be able to fast forward pretty quick, and we should be able to watch what actually happens to these orbits. Will Earth and Mars be pulled closer? I don't think it's going to have any effect on Venus and Mercury, so I'm not going to focus too heavily on them. We should hopefully be able to see a significant effect on these things. As you can see, it started to fade red once I actually speed, sped it up to like 3 years per second. I can't really uh, increase this too much or else it'll freak out pretty much. But here's the inner solar system. As you can tell, it's actually pulling the sun a little bit. That would probably be because Jupiter is a lot closer, I would imagine. The smaller gas giants I don't think will have a significant effect on our sun. I think it is definitely Jupiter kind of making it wobble quite a bit, as you can see right there. There's the sun's orbit. And you see Neptune's going nuts, but it is actually approximating properly. It's just... Uh, the trails don't look right. Let's uh, go to view and let's change it to orbits instead. And kind of see what's really going on. Which, as you can see, Earth and Mars are actually wobbling quite a bit. That's probably just because of the movement of the uh, sun, not so much the uh, gas giants on the inside pulling on them. But let's just uh, try to speed it up a bit more. So now we have five years per second. Now it's going a lot faster. 
What is that trail that is way out there? I don't know. Maybe an asteroid? No. I don't know what this line is. It's kind of spazzing out through the screen here, as you can see. But over over the years, these orbits should get a little bit more round, but they already kind of are at their max eccentricity, or kind of, not eccentric, like lowest eccentricity, and they're actually kind of round orbits, so, yeah. Well, except for, is that Uranus? Yeah, Uranus here. It's kind of, I think, being pulled towards Jupiter. In fact, it's actually about to cross Saturn's orbit. We'll give this a little bit longer. So far, we've gone through 729 years. 39, I meant, but yeah. You can see the years down here in the bottom left. Let's go ahead and just close this menu. Oh wow, Uranus is getting really, really close to Saturn's orbit. Okay, so I am back, and we've actually started to develop something here. Okay, so it's been 117,000 years of... No, that's 11,000 years. My bad. <laughs> Way off. Okay, but it's been about 11,000 years. I've let this go for about 20 minutes now, and uh, we have something kind of interesting starting to develop here. Uranus is now crossing path with Jupiter's orbit, but they're also throwing each other off a little bit. As you can tell, they've actually developed a tilt in their orbit. None of the outer planets have really developed this, so they're not really too affected by the inner mass's gravity other than the fact that they orbit around them. But, as you can see, all the inner gas giants have developed a tilt. Very interesting that it just kind of naturally developed that when orbiting in a flat axis. 
Now as you can see, Uranus gets really, really close to Jupiter and has been kind of pulled out of its orbit. Uranus was within Saturn's orbit and now it's actually outside of Jupiter's, so it was kind of slingshot outwards a little bit and now it's actually orbiting like this. I don't think we have had any collisions at all. That's are perfectly fine. The odds of them colliding are pretty unlikely. But yeah, basically, I'm probably going to end the simulation here if you guys want to try it yourself. It's not very hard to recreate. Yeah, this is what kind of happened over 11,000 years. I could have let it go longer, but I think this is about what it's going to stabilize to. Uranus is probably going to lose its eccentricity a little bit, or possibly even collide into Jupiter in the future. Which, I mean, if you really want to see Jupiter and Uranus collide, just go back to one of my other videos. Such as my what happens if all planets collide into each other video. They all just basically turn into Jupiter. A very big Jupiter, that mind you, but yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, essentially what you would expect to Earth has happened. It has turned into a snowball, and amazingly, we still have power. There's lights still on, we're still surviving barely. Apparently we can survive that. But uh... Yeah, if you guys like the video, please leave it a like, and if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe, it really does help, and I will see you guys in the next one. That is kind of interesting. I didn't expect that to actually happen to Uranus, though. Very unexpected. I did expect it to become a little bit more elliptical as it got pulled towards Jupiter. I didn't expect it to get thrown out like that, though. Very cool. Anyways, see you guys.